Today, we wanted to show you how to make manto, Chinese steamed buns. Now, there's three major types of Chinese manto. The northern type, which traditionally uses a sourdough starter mixed with some strong alkalines to balance its acidity. The southwestern sort, which, interestingly, opts instead for using fermented rice to make the starter. And finally, the southern variety, which uses, well, baking powder and yeast. Especially compared to the northern sort, they're a bit sweeter and fluffier. And if you've ever eaten manto abroad, these are generally what you'll find at dim sum joints and the like. Now eventually, we do want to teach you all three, but the southern sort of the most straightforward of the bunch, so we figured it'd be as good of a place as any to start with some manto basics. So, to get started with your fluffy southern manto, you'll need water. See, because this bun really loads up on sugar and yeast, we'll need to dissolve those two things separately. So to 45 grams of water, mix in 20 grams of granulated sugar, really making sure that it's all good and combined. Then do the same thing with another 45 grams of water and two grams or one teaspoon of instant dry yeast. These two things are sorted separately because a high sugar environment can actually pull moisture out of and damage yeast, making for an overly dense end result. So now in a separate bowl, sift 200 grams of all-purpose flour together with one teaspoon of baking powder. And for reference, the AP we're using here in China is 10.8% protein to be precise. Then add in the yeast water, slowly drizzling and mixing that in, aiming for the dry spots. Then do the same thing with the sugar water. Now knead that for eight minutes, alternatively using a stand mixer on speed one if you prefer, until your dough reaches about this consistency. Now cover and let that rest for 30 minutes. Now, one of the hallmarks of Southern style manto is its smooth skin, which is accomplished by repeatedly rolling the dough out thin before shaping. This is a characteristic technique in dim sum buns in order to remove air from the dough and ensure a smooth texture. You can also see it in stuff like lotus seed paste buns or the ever popular naiwang bao. So first, flatten your dough, and to make our job a bit easier, we'll be using a pasta maker on the widest setting to finish the job. Fold that over itself, then pass it through again six times in total. And yes, we are totally aware that our little IKEA tables being super unphotogenic here. If anyone has any ideas on how to accomplish this all a bit more elegantly, we're all ears. But regardless, after those six passes through the pasta maker, and again, feel free to do that all by hand if you prefer, starting from the back, tightly roll this all up into a log. You should be looking at something that's about 25 centimeters long. Then just flour work surface and lightly press down on the dough so that the bottom flattens out ever so slightly. Using a sharp knife now, cut that dough in half, then quarters, and finally into eight individual mantos. Definitely don't try to use a bench scraper for this step though. From experience being less sharp, it'll slightly press the dough and muff up that classic manto shape that you're going for. And speaking of looks, definitely also slice off the uneven bits of dough at the two ends, rolling it into a stupid, ugly ball, because I mean, not all our children need to be above average. Then just place your manto on some suitably sized squares of parchment paper, nestle those in a steamer, and these are good to proof. Now, for standardization's sake, to proof, we'll be tossing those over a wok filled with 28 centigrade water for 15 minutes, just in case your climate isn't quite the same thing as our Guangdong climate. So now, to steam. If you can, forgive us real quick for moving into our terribly lit kitchen for this step. See, our little outside camper burner is down to its very last can of butane, and right now it's a touch annoying to buy more because it is the apocalypse outside. So if it's all right with you, we'll just finish all this on the stove. So with the steamer over the same water, turn your flame to medium and let that all come up to a boil, watching the cracks for steam. The reason we're steaming this gently is so that it doesn't heat up too fast and form air bubbles on the surface of the manto. Once the water's boiling and the steam's obviously coming out, set your timer for five minutes. So then five minutes later, heat off, and for the same reason, don't peak for another five minutes. And after that time, the manto are done. If you do see a couple with some slight wrinkling on the skin though, don't panic, they'll still be tasty, but most of them should be nice and smooth. If they're not, it likely means you either overproof them or steamed at too high of a heat. Now, to be completely honest, part of the reason to make Southern style manto, for me at least, is that it's a great excuse to eat deep fried manto. To deep fry, in a wok, get about two cups of oil up to 175 centigrade and add in your manto. Fry for about 30 seconds, give them a flip, then fry for another minute, turning periodically. If your steamed manto are starting to get ever so slightly stale, by the way, this is a great way to use them up. Then just take them out and your deep fried manto are ready to devour, perfect to dip in way too much condensed milk. So this is the southern dim sum manto. 
Uh, another style is the northern lao mian mantou, which uses sourdough and is plain. Uh, people would often use it as a starch in a meal and eat alongside with other dishes. And some people would even stir fry the mantou and make it into a dish. And in the future, we'll also show you how to make the northern lao mian mantou. So alright, uh, check out the other link in the description box for detailed recipe. A big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon. And of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.